I'm the director of the Goral Institute for Space Studies in New York, and I've been working on the reasons why climate changes uh, through all sorts of different periods in, in paleoclimate right now and how it's going to change in the future. My interest in this was sparked by just being in the right place at the right time after I'd finished my PhD doing uh, applied maths on, on ocean circulation. Uh, but that wasn't terribly exciting for a lot of people. And so I ended up in a climate change uh, group where suddenly people were actually interested in the answers that mathematics and physics were producing. And since then, I've worked harder to make sure that the work that we do, the work that I'm interested in, is actually of interest to other people. And so I spend a lot of time trying to get people interested. And actually, it's not so hard, because people can see outside. They understand the weather. They understand the notion of climate. And they're very concerned about the notion of climate change. And so uh, it's a really easy thing for me to do, to continue to apply you know, the skills and the training that I had to these kinds of questions. Uh, so what I mostly spent my time doing is on the development and evaluation of what are called climate models. So these are our uh, encapsulation of all of the different processes that we can see, that we can go and measure, that we have data for. Uh, and we put all these things together and we try and understand how that whole system, how the whole climate system around the globe fits together, how all the pieces affect each one and all of the others. And then how the patterns of change that we see kind of emerge from all of those interconnections. Climate is one of those very interesting problems that it, it's not really amenable to reductionism. You can't chop it into smaller and smaller bits and say, OK, this is the essence of climate. You have to look at it as a whole, and you have to have all of the bits that matter acting at the same time. And it's only now that we have uh, really powerful computers that we've really been able to achieve that. Like 50 years ago, this wasn't really possible, but now it is. And that is giving us a huge number of insights, both into climate change in the past and also to what's going on right now. So I've often used this medical analogy for trying to understand what's going on with the climate system as a whole. You know, as a doctor, you know, you can probe, you can test, you can make a diagnosis. What's going on right here, right now? Uh, and you can do the same thing for the climate. You know, we can look at the data for temperature changes in the stratosphere or at the surface or how much energy is going into the ocean or what the satellites are seeing or what's happening to the sea ice. And we can make a uh, diagnosis that says, well, you know, the Earth is out of balance because we're putting in more energy right now than is leaving, and that energy is affecting the climate, it's affecting the ice, it's affecting the weather. Um, now, the prognosis, just as with a doctor, depends on what you're going to do subsequently, right? What's going to happen if we have no intervention? Well, what's going to happen is that increasing carbon dioxide emissions, which is the dominant uh, force pushing this forward, uh, are continuing to increase. Uh, we're burning more and more fossil fuel every year, uh, and so the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing. Uh, that is the driver of the warming that we're seeing, and so we can anticipate that that warming will continue. And in fact, it will accelerate uh, in the absence of any serious intervention. Uh, and so the prognosis is that we're going to be seeing a warmer planet. Now, exactly how much warmer and what those consequences are going to be in any particular region, that's something that we need to work on much more closely. Uh, but for the planet as a whole, uh, we have uh, warmer times ahead, uh, and, and that's going to cause uh, significant dislocations for a lot of uh, the society uh, and agriculture and industry that rely on the fact that we used to have a stable climate. Well, future emissions are not following similar patterns. They're actually increasing much first faster than they used to be. So, uh, you know, every year now it's like two and a half, three ppm uh, CO2 increases uh, because the emissions are increasing 10 gigatons per year, 11 gigatons per year, et cetera. Um, and it's a cumulative problem, right? It's not just that the change is going to be what we're doing right now. The change is happening because of the history of what we've already done. And so the more we put into the system, then the higher the eventual temperatures are going to be if we ever manage to stabilize those emissions. 
So I think that's a terrible yeah. question. Yeah. The, the, the idea that there's only so much time and then, it, then there's nothing to be done, that's, that's, that's terrible framing yeah. and it's, it's not reality. The reality is that we're making decisions today that have ramifications for the future. The reality is that in 10 years' time, we will still be making decisions that have ramifications for the future. There's never going to be a time, regardless of what happens, that we don't have decisions to be made and choices between making a decision that's going to be p a positive for the climate or negative. And we're always going to have those decisions to make. And that isn't going to change whether it's this year, next year, four years, or 10 years down the line. Four degrees is hard to get your head around. I mean, what does it mean? Um, one of the, the key analogies I like to use is the fact that the last ice age, when uh, the world was, uh, had sea levels 120 meters lower, it had enormous ice sheets over North America, uh, most of Iceland was glaciated, most of Europe was glaciated. That had a temperature change of only five degrees cooler than today. And so if you're thinking about a one ice age unit in the other direction, that was a completely different planet. Five degrees the other direction will be a completely different planet. And four degrees is very close to that.